But the first line. So this, it's called Prosopopoeia of Warmth, and I will be boringly reading from a paper. The spring talk here and now is a consequence of something that happened during last November, December, when we have installed a stove burning the construction wood left from the season in Estonian Contemporary Art Museum, EKKM. We connected it with the heat pipe, heat pipes to agree the benches in the museum main hall. I entitled myself as an honorable job of a stalker and worked there my 24 hour shifts with three day breaks to heat up the building. Together with helpers, I invited in visitors to join us. Next one. Help to the stalker of the central heating boiler borrowed its title from the book found in what would soon become a KKM when the building was first rediscovered in 2006. It was written in the early 70s and for at least a few years after its publication. It provided the technical help needed to heat the talent power plant. Most likely this was the reason that the book was found in there, as the building, now called the Little Skeleton, was once part of the Italian power plant. Next one. No, the one before. Yeah. Thanks. The narrative would now struggle to scrape the scraps against each other strong enough to cause a spark. The jerky motion of my thought paths strives to recreate the heat that once procreated them. Next one. It is unlikely going to happen, even less likely in seven and a half minutes. I am thus caught in a moment where I either need to start a fire from the ashes I desperately blow on, from which even a bottle full of nostalgic spirit would not be enough, or fish out the scraps of half-burned wood and lay them one after another like cold bones, from which forensics would restore a story. Fire or ice, none would suffice. Next one. I would take a relatively cold approach of looking at the wood logs that have been there prepared before the autumn fire. I found myself back then in a situation somewhat similar to the one now, but I was surrounded by stories from the past, from the particular warm or hot pasts, which I've never lived in. Those were stories of different types of heat, the physical heat and the warmth of gathering together, or the heat of the struggle. They happened in different places, in the late Soviet boiler houses, which being physically entwined into the system and its reproductive capacity for a network of heat pipes, had at the same time offered some unusual degree of autonomy for stockers and their subodilniki, or convives, to generate together some other heat, the one for which the state did not have a five-year plan. Next one. They happened also in the ancient Roman therma, where stalker slaves would work under the floor hippocost to heat up the deed of something that combined public sauna and centro sociale, now mostly roofless and heated by the sun. Next one. Or in the north of Italy, Milan, Turin, Porto Marghera, in workers' self-organized assemblies, in the major strikes of 60s, which gave birth to autonomia movement and burst in many clashes during the so-called Hot Autumn of 1969. Next. I armed myself with a thermal camera that is well equipped for such investigation, as it makes you assess the heat while staying in relative cold. It brings the evidence in place of testimony. It makes you see the other's presence without being present yourself. Sometimes it even makes some particularly silver-tongued ones to judge the other's presence, to disoccupy the occupiers. Next. It extracts the information from reality and draws this chart. What you see is so image-like that you can mistake it for an image. It is a visualization of data superimposed onto a portrait of a scene. But in this superimposition, there is a slight gap, 
a sort of a double contour that sometimes grows so wide apart that it becomes disjoint, like left and right channels in the 3D of Godard's goodbye language. It struggles to deliver something beyond the aesthetic level, as if telling me, look at me, but see not what you see, read through me, read between the double lines. Thermal image asks for translation, for an interpreter, who would together with it start the prosopopoeia. Let me stop here, where I once started. Let me stop on this too quick of an assumption that thermal image asks for translation. Does it really ask for it? Next one. Dir ist ja Unrecht. Geschehen wie keinem auf dem Schiff, das weiß ich genau. Du musst dich aber zur Wehr setzen. Ja und nein sagen, sonst haben noch die Leute keine Ahnung von der Wahrheit. Du musst mir versprechen, dass du mir folgen wirst, denn ich selbst, das fürchte ich mit vielem Grund, werde dir gar nicht mehr helfen können. Der Heizer scheint dich bezaubert zu haben, du hast dich verlassen gefühlt. Da hast du den Heizer gefunden und bist ihm jetzt dankbar, das ist ja ganz löblich. Treibe das aber schon mir zu Liebe. Nicht zu weit und lerne deine Stellung begreifen. In Kafka's America, masterfully accentuated and... Warum sagst du denn nichts? Warum lässt du dir alles... ...and put on film by Daniel Oye and Jean-Marie Straub, the stalker did not really ask Karl Rosman for help. I wonder what made Karl speak in the name of a stalker, speak about what he has not seen and has not really felt. What did help mean? in the failed symbiosis of Karl and Stoker. Next one. I was and still am thinking about the warm help. The help that doesn't come as an answer to a call. The one that doesn't get processed in some overheated IT company helpline somewhere in Bangladesh or Malaysia and then you're kindly asked to rate the service afterwards. Neither is it exactly the help as a friendly gesture of taking care of someone, however generous and crucial this kind of help is. Maybe it is the help whose warmth is produced in excess and in absence of any concrete reason and request. And thus it could not dislodge itself once the job is done. Maybe it is the help that suggests us the vision of autonomy very different from various flavors of isolation and separation that we mistake it for so often. A vision for which maybe our eyes have been so, so far too small, its visible spectrum too narrow. Maybe, quoting Thomas the Obscure of Maurice Blanchot, our eyes should take on extraordinary proportions, develop beyond measure, and stretching out on the horizon let the night penetrate its center in order to receive the day from it. And so, for this void, it would be sight and the object of sight, which would mingle together. The selflessness of help, I am thinking about, is not a trace of some other higher state of generosity and doesn't have self-sacrifice as its precondition. But maybe the border between the heater and the heated could once become permeable and diffuse. By this I don't mean that the antagonisms have to be blurred out by too hastily reached consensus. On the contrary, blurring of some contours, for example a subject willing to help another subject, may lead to the counter and counter formation of other collective subjectivities. I am reminded of Gramsci, who saw political subjects not as classes, strictly speaking, but as what he called complex collective wills. The collective prosopopy of warmth must not be colonized by the cold subjectivity. Thank you. Next slide.